great significance in our spiritual life. In fact, ascension is not an eclipse, it is not a myth, it is not an illusion, it is not utopian, it is not imagination, it is a historical fact, it is a reality. And we are not just remembering ascension, but we make it effective today in our souls. That's why it is not a past event, it is a present, concrete, existential e event. And as I said at the beginning of the Mass, this ascension is one of the six components of Christian faith. We have incarnation, we have the death, resurrection, Pentecost, and the second coming. The other one, it is today's solemnity. That's why it is of a spiritual significance in our life. And this historical fact of a session, just after the resurrection, he appeared to his disciples several times within the period of 40 days. And why did he appear to the disciples? He appeared to them, instructing them about the kingdom of God. That's why he commissioned them to go to the ends of the earth to continue his mission. Not only those disciples, but also I and you. That's why this concept of a session, we want to make it real today. And he instructed them to preach the gospel to the ends of earth. As an historical fact, when the 11 disciples were gazing up at Jesus, he was lifted up and clouds uh, took him out of their sight. Why clouds? In the Old Testament and the New Testament, cloud signifies the divine presence, the presence of God. That's why when he was lifted up, he united himself with God the Father and also God the Holy Spirit. And according to the tradition of the Catholic Church, he was received by the seraphims with the angels and we are singing him of praise, of glory. And we can just point out the fruits of this accession. First of all, the coming of the Holy Spirit, sending of the Holy Spirit, the third person who comes from God the Father and God the Son. And the disciples, after receiving the Holy Spirit, were totally and radically transformed. That's why today, I and you, we are invited to be transformed radically and totally. To feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. To feel the presence of a uh, divine power. That is, means that after Mass, when we go back home, we should be different, transformed with the dwelling of this divine presence in our hearts and in our souls. That's why today we are not, we are not waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit. He has already come. He is within us. 
He is waiting us to receive him, to open our hearts, to open our intellect, to open our lives, to open our families, places of work, everywhere, so that he may continue to dwell within us. That's why it is not a time of promise that you are waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit. No. He has already come. He is within us. But most of the time, we are not aware of his presence in our life. That's why even novena of Pentecost of the Holy Spirit aims at helping us to realize the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. God, he is within us. And we, because we are weak, we need to prepare our hearts, our life, so that we may be transformed radically and totally. Again, today we are invited to reflect on the second coming, that he will come to us as a judge and Lord for all. Even our friends Muslims, they believe that Jesus Christ is, will come the second coming. Our friends, Muslims. That's why it is not our business to speculate the time or the season. We need to be prepared. And the mandate of a session, Jesus said, all authority in heavens and earth <coughs> was given to me. Make the disciples of all nations baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, what is our task? Shall we go to the streets and baptizing people with water? No. We need to reflect each one of us how he is participating, participating in the economy of salvation. Through your presence, through your words through your acts and in fact when you are participating in the economy of salvation we should remember that creation it is it was not static it, it was dynamic that's why even ourselves when we go to work we continue that work of creation for example when you are building the uh, the house of saint joseph we are continuing the work of creation. When you are working or you are innovating something in your places of work, you are continuing the work of creation. That's why today we are challenged. For example, this pandemic, COVID-19, it has challenged us, politicians, religious leaders, uh, faithful, of different uh, races and religions. How we stand firm to believe that God is going to help us. Yes, we have some precautions, but God first. I tell you, when you put God first in your programs, you will be successful in whatever you are doing. Put the Holy Spirit first. God the Father, Jesus Christ, when you are thinking and to have that attitude of the divine presence, to think in a divine way. Yes, we meet some obstacles in our lives. That is normal. But how are we solving them? Are we just using human intellect, human science, or we are invoking the divine presence to help us to see uh, the obstacle and solve it. Let us ask God in this celebration so that we may commit ourselves totally to God 100%. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth of all things visible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of the God, from the Father, before all ages, God from God, right from right, true God from true God, begotten not man, the subject of the Father, who him all things were made. For as men and for salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, 